Hello, everybody, and welcome to Enter the Gungeon. This is a brand new game that I am very excited to bring you all. It's something I've been kind of watching for the past couple of months, and, well, I'm excited that it's almost here. So what we have today is a little bit of a preview of what I'm allowed to show you in this game. To give you an idea of what exactly to expect from this, imagine The Binding of Isaac, Nuclear Throne, and a little bit of Borderlands had a baby. This would be the outcome. It's got Isaac mentality where you've got different floors go through all the different rooms. It's a roguelike in that sense. And it's got a whole bunch of wacky, crazy guns. So it's got a little bit of a Borderlands vibe with all its different craziness. And it also is a bullet hell. So think Nuclear Throne, but not as crazy. Not nearly as demanding. But anyway, I hope you all enjoy this video. And I'm going to show you about as much as I can. The full game comes out on April 5th, and that's when we'll be able to start having more and more videos on this game. Until then, here's a little bit of a sneak peek. And again, if you enjoy it, do me a favor and go ahead and hit a like. I'm curious as to how many people are interested in this type of game. It's going to be, it's going to be a different one. So let's go ahead and jump into the gungeon. So we've got a whole bunch of different characters here that we can pick from. We've got the pilot, the marine, the convict, and the hunter. Today, we're going to go ahead and try out the marine. Now, they all have their own special quirks, and the cultist here is for co-op play, which, well, I can't really do right now. Now, the unlock system for this game is a little bit interesting. You acquire currency by killing the bosses that you go that you you know encounter in the gungeon, and you've got all these boxes that you can actually use to unlock items. And you actually have to unlock this shop as well. Like in order to unlock things in the game, you have to find them in you have to find these people in the gungeon and then free them. And then they'll give you various perks and benefits outside of the gungeon. And for here, you can spend that currency and unlock items. So you unlock based on how skilled you are at the game. The further you go into the gungeon, the more currency you're going to acquire from the said bosses. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a second here to explain the UI, as it's pretty obvious, but not may not be as intuitive to all. So in the top left there, you've got your hearts and your little bullet shield icon. That bullet shield will absorb one attack, and if you get hit, it will actually do that. It will send out a shockwave in all directions, damaging and removing all bullets from the screen. And, well, damaging enemies and removing all bullets from the screen. So it's a kind of nice, like, oh, oh crap button. Now, these only, these will only block one actual hit. So they're not in the same sense of, like, soul hearts or anything like that. You've got one hit on it. Also, a nice little touch is that it knocks off the Marine's helmet, which is kind of neat. Just below that, you're going to see these little blue bullets. What these are called are blanks. What they do is that you activate these manually, and they'll trigger the same effect as that shield did. If you use it, you'll end up removing all of the blank or all of the bullets on the screen, pushing back enemies and dealing a small amount, small amount of damage. Now, these regenerate every single floor, so use them when you need them. If you end up in a tight spot or don't think you can dodge something, then you can just pop a blank. Now, keep in mind that you're only going to have usually about two to three per floor. They can drop, but I wouldn't rely on it. So just keep in mind that, just assume that you only have two blanks. Now you can't actually buy more from your shop, but there's better things in the shop that you want to buy rather than using blanks. Below that is your keys. As you can see there, I've got two keys, and these are used to open up chests that are found throughout the map, or open up special doors, or free those special people that you can find inside the gungeon. To the right of the keys, you're gonna find the currency, which are shells. Or bullets. I think they're shells. Either way. Or casings. That's the word I was looking for. Casings, yeah. Anyway, this is the currency that's used in Enter the Gungeon. And you can spend these inside of your shop. These will buy you hearts, items, keys, ammo, anything that you can really think of. You can buy it inside of your shop. You'll get these randomly as enemies die. And once you clear a room, they'll actually all collect into you, as you can see here. I don't have to go around hunting down random item or random, you know casings that fall on the floor. I can just have them all come to me and you don't have to worry about like, hey, gotta make sure this room's clear or anything like that. No, you don't have to do that. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see this little uh, icon there. 
That's going to change depending on your item. That is your use item, your spacebar item, if you're familiar with bi the Binding of Isaac. Different items obviously have different effects. The one that I currently have is an ammo drop, which is something that the the Marine starts with. The ammo drop is a one-time use event that will give you maximum ammo for whatever gun you choose to use it on. And we're going to go ahead and open our first chest here, and we're going to get the MAC-10. Shit never ends. So you can kind of see on the map here that you can actually use these green little teleport pads to teleport in any, um, you know, anywhere on the map that there is a pad. These pads are unlimited use as long as long as you are not in combat. So if you want to just, you know, go to a room that you might have missed without actually having to backtrack, you know, for like two minutes, you can do that. And you'll unlock these sporadically throughout the map. Usually it's a good good sense that if you're finding more checkpoints, you're probably getting closer to your boss, but that's not always the case. They're usually just kind of littered all around the place. Now, keys can be bought from the shop, or you can find them randomly. However, it can be a little bit difficult to find keys, so just assume that you're not going to find any and that you're going to have to buy them. Usually, you're going to have to either take a risk here, and this chest actually has a little fuse on it. And what that means is that if I don't open that chest within a certain amount of time, it's gone forever. Then you've got the, also got the ammo Nomicon. Negates poison damage is what I just picked up. That's another little interesting feature is that you can open up the ammo Nomicon at any given time and see what exactly the item you just picked up did. You don't have to make these wild assumptions like, oh, I wonder what that did. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to be clueless forever until eventually some data miner figure, figures it out. Nope, it'll just tell you straight up what it does. Now here's the shop that you can kind of expect. You've got your health, that green thing is an actual ammo pack, and I decided to buy a gun. Also note, don't shoot your guns inside the shop. The first time you shoot, he'll give you a warning. The second time he shoots, he'll double the prices of everything in the shop. And the third time you shoot, well, he's not going to be too happy with you. And he's going to fire off his double barrel shotgun everywhere in the room until you either leave or die. I wouldn't recommend it. To my knowledge, you can't actually kill the shopkeeper. You just kind of piss him off. And here's our first boss. Bosses are lo or, you know, noted by that little door that you saw there. Pretty obvious, like, hey, you're about to enter a boss room. Now this one's the Bullet King. Now one mechanic that I've yet to really explain here is the dodge roll. This is what the whole game is basically based on. And there's a blank that you can see there that gets rid of all the bullets. The dodge roll gives you complete immunity to all damage in the first half of the animation. So if you roll at just the right time, then you can completely negate any otherwise impossible damage. And the game will throw attacks at you where you are supposed to use this dodge roll mechanic. And this is how you survive in the gungeon. Now something to keep in mind is that at the other end of your animation, you will still take damage. It's not the full roll, it's only the first half when you're off the ground, is the, is the way that they put it. And it's pretty accurate. So if you actually end up rolling into a bullet, like I just did there, then you're not going to get protected. And that's something to keep in mind. Now, after, when, whenever you kill a boss, you're going to get a variety of items there. Those are hegemony credits, which what those do is it gives you uh, currency to unlock different items. And we see we get two different ammo, ammo packs and we got the Glacier. Now, you're not always going to get a gun whenever you end up, you know, killing your boss. So you could get health, you could get a passive trinket, you could get basically anything that you would find in a chest. It doesn't seem like bosses have like a set boss pool like Isaac does. It just kind of gives you whatever. Well, actually, no, I take that back. I think you have a higher chance of finding rare guns when you end up killing a boss. So the way this game kind of works is that it really isn't much of a damage stat like an Isaac or anything like that. It's more of like, it's similar to Nuclear Throne where there are guns and there are better guns. But you can still pretty much kill anything with your, you can kill things with tier one guns. It's not really that much of a problem. It's a matter of how much ammo you're gonna end up using. There's really not that much in the way of like health tanks in this game. Well, if there are, they're pretty obvious. They're huge and they drop a lot of money as a result. 
and we're going to go ahead and cycle through our guns here. Now, here's something to keep in mind. Whenever you go from one room to the next, you may think, oh, I'll just save that ammo for later. You don't want to end up doing that, because if you do that, you'll actually have, you have the chance of having a rat come by and steal your items. So that's something to keep in mind. And they do that on purpose, so that way you have to use this now, or you may not get a chance to use this at all. And we go ahead and pick up the sawed off shotgun to show off, you know, a few more of the guns here. And these maps are complete, are you know, generated at random, so there's really no way to tell, you know, which way you can end, you're, you're supposed to end up going. Now, obviously, after you know a couple hundred hours of gameplay, I'm sure there will end up being tells of like, hey, if this happens, you're usually going in the right direction and things like that. But with how these maps are generated, you don't have the simple grid-like feature of Isaac where, you know, if this is right next to this, then it's impossible to continue on. These these paths can wind in very interesting ways, and it can be a little difficult to try and figure out which way you're going. Although, it's pretty much a given that if you keep going and you haven't seen a shop, you're pretty much heading either to... Or rather, if you haven't seen an item room, you're heading to your shop or you're heading to your boss, one of the two. As your boss is usually as far away as possible from, you know, your starting point. Now, there's a variety of floors, and I can't exactly tell you how deep the gungeon actually goes, because it does stop after, I believe, floor three. Uh, there's actually a little lock on there that says, hey, thanks for playing early. <laughs> See you on April 5th. I actually did manage to get to the, to the end of the third floor in another playthrough, and it's a lot of fun. It is definitely a lot of fun. It's also very challenging. It may seem a little bit easy now, but things get to, things start getting a bit hectic as you get further and further into the game. Now, there will eventually start becoming more and more ground-based environment traps, as you can see here. There's these panels with holes in them, and if you step on them, spikes will eventually come out of them. So that's something to keep in mind. There's also a variety of hazards that you will end up encountering, such as chandeliers that are above or dynamite that can end up being blown up to destroy parts of your room so that's something to keep in mind and here's an example of one of the larger you know tankier enemies he's pretty slow and by himself he's not that much of an issue and he does actually drop a decent amount of money there as you can see he drops like 30 of those casings and that's pretty substantial so you know you get a lot of money for invest for you know invest in those bullets into his face but overall, I really like the uh, the difference of the enemies here. You know, they're all... They all have their own purpose here. You know, you've got your little guys that really aren't that much of an issue. And you've got your shotgunners that are there to try and wall you off. And then you've got those little purple dudes, which if you leave them alone, they'll try and... They don't really do damage if they hit you, but they're trying to knock you off into those pits. You've got your snipers, as you can see here. And I killed the little bullet bill guy right off the bat, so you didn't get, re get to really see what he did here. And we picked up a new gun called the the Fight Saber. Now, this one is actually one of the few cursed guns in this game. And here's a shrine. I have yet to actually figure out how exactly to use the shrine. But I'm, I'll am i figure it out eventually. Or maybe it's just not available in the actual early um, access that I have here. Which is probably very likely. Because it might actually concern to later parts of the story of the game. Now, the actual story of this game is actually not available. So, now what we have is a D20 shrine, which, you know, I gotta roll it. So, what I got was limited plus hasted. So, what that ended up doing, if you look at my ammo count, it's now cut in half. But, I got a vastly increased movement speed as a result. So, the D20 machines that I have seen th thus far, I've encountered them a few times. They pretty much always, always, yeah, almost always give you a positive and a negative effect. You're going to get something good, but it's going to cost you. And that seems to be the something that happens throughout the entire game. There's a lot of things in here that, you know, it's good, but you're going to be giving something else up in return. For example... The pilot, or the, uh, the, yeah, the pilot actually starts with a lockpick that can be used to open up any kind of door or chest or things like that. But the downside is, is that if the lockpick actually fails, the door is locked forever. And even if you get a key later, you can't open it up again. So you have to make the decision. Do I really want to open this or do I want to just try and hope for a key? 
And we uh, have an extra shop here. Now, this is a lady that can show up anywhere in the gungeon, and it's someone you unlock later on. Her items are usually discounted, but they come with a curse. These curses can do a various different things. I'm not entirely sure uh, how exactly to see what the curses do to you, but they're, all, they're usually always negative. Usually always negative. And the item that I picked up here was actually uh, invulnerability for a short amount of time. Now we're moving on to our next boss here, and we have the gun... The gun... The gun gun? Gorgon. That's what it is. Gorgon. Now, interesting enough, I ignore one of the main mechanics of this fight because of the item that I picked up. If you remember earlier in the video, I picked up an item that made me immune to poison damage, which... I'm sure you can probably guess is exactly what that green stuff is and you don't want to stand in it. But thanks to this item, I can pretty much completely ignore everything that she just did. And we're going to go ahead and use another blank there to try and get rid of that. So you're going to have different items that, you know, negate bosses. And as you can see here, this item actually uh, that's floating around me also works as a sort of an orbital and that it will block bullets. I don't know if I was cursed and I actually was able to kind of, I don't know, ignore the the, <clears throat> the stoned ability that she gave me or it was because I was already firing. But I'm going to dodge it anyway. That little shockwave that you saw there, if you end up getting hit by it, uh, you'll be turned to stone and you're not able to shoot for a while. You can still move around, but you can't do any damage. Or at least that's what's supposed to happen and it may just be because of a, a cursed gun. The game does tell you a lot, but there's still some stuff to learn here. And you can kill the corpse afterwards. So now we've got a heart and we've got an ammo pack, which unfortunately doesn't do that much for me anymore since I kind of, uh, I kind of got cursed and had my ammo count kind of reduced. So I've got a compass here now. And at the time of recording this, I didn't exactly know what the hell it did, but I wanted to go ahead and show off this whole rat that steals your loot. So you can kind of shoot him and get him away, but you can't really kill him, or maybe you can, I'm not entirely sure. But you can shoot him off your loot if you want to do though. If you want to do that, you know, that kind of thing. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next floor of this whole little adventure here. So this is kind of the entire premise of the game. Now, there are a, a lot of guns in this game. I'm not entirely sure, but... I believe there's at least like a hundred to almost 200. No, I wouldn't say 200. Just, I want to say positively there's at least like a hundred guns. And all these guns are very unique. You can have a literal water gun. Like it, it, look, it straight up looks like a super soaker. It shoots a water beam and it fills the room with water. You've also got fish in a barrel. It's a gun that is a barrel and you shoot fish out of it. You've also got the light gun which is a Nintendo, you know, light gun. You know, the thing you use in Duck Hunt. And the final round of the light gun shoots out a duck. <laughs> they had a lot of fun with these different types of guns. And it's very clear that a lot of time and effort went into this game. That said, it's not the easiest game in the world once you start getting into the later floors. You know, as with any game, this or any bullet hell game, you're going to make a couple mistakes here and there. Obviously, with, you know, a little bit more play, I'll get a bit more used to it, but yeah. It's, it's definitely interesting once you get to some of the more difficult enemies that are on the map. But we won't end up seeing that in this gameplay here. And we've got a little area that we can walk across. But like I said, I am very excited to bring this kind of gameplay to you all. And I'm really looking forward to what exactly uh, we can end up accomplishing um, once the game is actually released. It will be on April 5th. I don't know what my upload schedule is going to be. And I'm not going to promise something that I may not be able to actually, you know deliver on so i'm not going to promise anything but i will say i can promise you that i will be doing content on this and i hope you all enjoyed it i will say straight up when i said that isaac would be going away when enter the gungeon showed up this is the game that was going to end up replacing it i'm still going to finish the 1001 percent isaac run i definitely do have plans to finish that before this game actually releases but this game is just too good. Like, I like guns. And there's also the aspect that some people didn't like watching Isaac because, well, it's a very gruesome and weird game. Also, I'm on fire, and you notice you actually have to use the dodge roll to put yourself out. It's kind of neat. 
Um, it's a very gruesome game. You know, you've got a small naked child running around in the basement, killing his own mother and killing other abominations. It's not exactly the most pleasant game to describe to people. And to the Gungeon, however, is pretty straightforward. It's guns. It's literally guns. Everything are guns. Your health are bullets. Your ammo are bu your ammo are bullets. Good job. Ten out of ten. The keys are bullets. The money's bullets. Your blanks are bullets. Everything's bullets. The enemies are bullet based. All of the bosses are bullet punned. You know, it's it's a game about various guns and all that stuff. And you can see there. Some of those those wizards start to get really ridiculous. The first one we encountered didn't really do anything that crazy, but the second one, boy, he sure does uh, throw a mean little, you know, bullet hell at you. And like with Isaac, you've got a variety of different floors. The first one, or the first two, were, you know, your standard floors, and then we've got the mines here. I don't, like I said, I don't know how deep these end up going, but I have gotten. Fairly, you know, the fairly as far as it'll allow you, and you do fight some pretty ridiculous bosses. I may end up getting gameplay of those bosses, but honestly, I'd kind of rather keep myself, you know, kind of blind. I really don't want to learn any more about the game until we actually get there. And I'm not entirely sure what exactly I have planned for, you know, the kind of upload schedule because I do want to do this on YouTube, but I also want to do this on Twitch, which means that, well, there's not multiple save files, so. This makes things very difficult. If I want to stream it on Twitch and I want to, you know, play this on YouTube, I don't really know if I can do two separate files. So there's a very good chance that we're not going to really do a whole unlocking or rather I could upload my Twitch runs. That's really, I'm actually going to go ahead and ask that to you all. Do you mind a couple of Twitch runs in case, you know, I unlock something crazy or something like that being on being on YouTube? I'm not really a big fan of uploading things from my Twitch because, well, I like putting unique content on Twitch. But then again, people like seeing things that might have been missed. I can't actually end up seeing if, you know, multiple save files ends up being a thing. But if it's not, well, then, oh, well, too bad. So explaining a couple more of the enemies here, you can actually see that the uh, little dark gray or the, the dark red one there is actually shooting these different projectiles now the reason that this is different is because these are basically your elite enemies and if they hit you rather than doing half a heart of damage they're going to do a full heart so be prepared to be in, in for a lot of pain when these type of projectiles end up hitting you and we're going to go ahead and keep filling up our mac 10 because i mean it's pretty good it's a pretty good item now i'm not doing so hot right now on the health side of things but uh i can either try and risk this or i'm not i'm really i'm not really entirely sure of how exactly i want to go about it and by the way the compass i didn't end up figuring out that it, it takes you to your boss i mean what else is it going to point you to it's going to point you to your boss so you can use that to you know find things quickly and taking on your boss right away isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world if you actually have the ammo and stuff to deal with it which is kind of nice. And unlike Isaac, there's a really good incentive to make sure that everything is clear. And I know people are going to say, well, you're supposed to clear your floors anyway. You know, when you're playing Isaac, and, uh, you, you know, you gotta do that thing. But I mean, like, the money aspect. It's not like, hey, I need you to, you know, shoot at every single fire, blow up every single vase, and do all these, you know mind-numbingly boring things just so you can maybe find a little bit of extra cash no it's really just kill the enemies move on it even says like hey you don't get anything from destroying the barrels but you should break them anyway that's actually the in-game tip break the barrels they don't do anything but you should do it now those tables that you can flip there you can actually see that i haven't been using that mechanic at all but i'll go ahead and explain it it's showed to you in the tutorial but i haven't really found that much of a use for it because well most of the time i just brute force my way and dodge everything because that's my kind of game style thing but anyway what they'll do is basically you can flip them over and turn them into movable cover which is you know a really neat concept there and that right there was a mimic and had i been standing in front of it i would have died because when you open up the mimic it immediately shoots a red bullet at your current location which means that would have been death so actually you know what we're gonna go ahead and buy the armor and take our chances with the boss probably not gonna work 
probably going to die, but you know what? What the hell? We're going to try it anyway. And this boss can actually be a bit of a bit of a jerk. We've got Cannon Balrog. A gun in the deep. And we go ahead and use one of our blanks there. Now, the guns in this game, I never really felt like I was ever at the mercy of RNG. I always felt like, you know, I was able to pretty much take on the boss with whatever I usually ended up having. Obviously, I'm taking a lot of damage here, but I mean the actual health portion of these bosses. They didn't feel like literal tanks of health where if you didn't get, you know, eight damage ups, you were going to suffer for the 17 minute fight. <coughs> Isaac, <coughs> keeper, <coughs> hush. Also, they don't normalize your damage. If you find a kick ass gun, which they do exist, you're going to do kick ass damage. That's pretty much how the game ends up playing. And we end up getting hit there. So that's the end of Enter the Gungeon and the end of our little sneak peek here. Look forward to a lot more Enter the Gungeon gameplay coming up on April 5th. Again, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and go ahead and hit the like button as I would greatly appreciate it. Shows me that you are looking forward to more content of this game. And uh, yeah, expect a whole lot of stuff to uh, you know, end up coming on the channel here. And stuff also we're kind of near the end of the video so i'm going to go ahead and address videos are going to be uploaded at 1 p.m central standard time i'm going to try and keep a streak going with that out of the way thank you for watching catch you all in the next one everybody bye